It's no secret that this new landscape of social media requires you to upload at an alarming rate that just is not sustainable for the majority of people. So in this video, I want to break down how you can edit two to three times more content in the exact same time span with these seven different categories that I'm going to go over. And these are also just the gems that I've picked up over the past decade in editing. This stuff right here is going to speed up the process so much more. Now, when it comes to editing, what if I told you what it is that you are editing with is hindering you from editing faster? If you have a laptop and you only edit on your laptop and you're using a built-in trackpad, you're losing. This MX Master 3S mouse is something that I've raved about in tons of YouTube videos that I've already uploaded. And it's just because I believe in it so much and I use this thing every day and it's so much freaking better than the stock options out there. Now, I hate to continuously compare this to the Magic Mouse by Apple, but I have to because when you buy an Apple computer, a lot of the times this is what you're going to get with your computer and you're just going to continue to use it. And I know that for a fact because that was me for a long time. But once I got this mouse, it literally changed the game for me. Now, ergonomically, this mouse is just miles ahead of the Apple Magic Mouse. The Magic Mouse looks clean and it's sleek, but this thing right here fits the natural curve of your hand so much better. And in turn, you're able to edit for longer periods of time without you being in pain. I used to think the Magic Mouse was amazing and it looked good and it was sleek until it was time for me to have to charge the thing. And then I basically couldn't edit. So <laughs> this mouse also solves that problem as well because the charging port is right on the front and it's USB-C. So you probably have a ton of different cables for it. It just makes sense. I hate the fact that that is even a conversation or something that we have to think about, but it is, man. Now, all of those things are cool, but the real reason that I think that this is the best mouse that you can get for editing is the buttons and the customization that you can do with them. Now, on the side of the MX Master 3S mouse, you have a couple different buttons that you can adjust. You have this front one and this back one. And for me, I have them bind it into things that I do on the normal when it comes to editing. My front one is to cut, my back one is to delete. I know that this doesn't sound like it's a lot, but if you really take tabs on how much you cut and delete clips in an edit, it's literally hundreds of times. So the fact that I can just do it right here on this and not have to have my hand leave my mouse makes that process of editing so much faster. You also have a horizontal scroll wheel so you can scrub the timeline left and right. And then you have other buttons on the mouse as well that you can customize to different things inside the editing program to fit however you enjoy editing. It's super simple to do as well. Editing for me, a lot of the times boils down to me sitting right here at this cockpit, my desk with my monitor and my desktop. But I also edit on the go as well. I have a MacBook Pro. So whether I'm traveling or I'm at a coffee shop, I love the fact that this mouse allows me to pair it to multiple different devices all by just clicking a button at the bottom of it. I can rave about this mouse literally this entire video. It's so much better than a lot of the options out there. It fits the curve of your hands ergonomically just solid. And it's nothing that I would add to this mouse to make it better. It's literally perfect in my eyes. And I'm always going to recommend it. I literally probably have like three of these things. Now, when it comes to keyboard for your editing, I know that this is something that a lot of people don't think about either, but <laughs> this MX Mechanical keyboard by Logitech is a lot better than a lot of the other options out there. And here's why. Editing for long periods of time, if you are uncomfortable, it's going to show eventually and it's going to hurt eventually. <laughs> the incline on this keyboard is so much better than a lot of the other options out there. And in turn, it just makes the process of editing so much more comfortable. This is a mechanical keyboard. So striking each key on this keyboard is so freaking satisfying. I know that it has absolutely nothing to do with editing, but with the keyboard, you want it to feel good when you're using it. You have function keys at the top that you can customize to whatever you do on your computer. And then it also has a ton of different backlighting options, which also have nothing to do with editing, but they just look cool. I'm a firm believer of actually enjoying what you use in a lot of different ways. So the fact that this thing looks good, it sounds good, it's customizable, makes it just a no brainer for me. Also enjoy this bigger option with the keypad off to the side because uh, whenever I'm typing or doing anything in editing, it just makes it easy. Now you probably won't believe this, but I used to not be a shortcut person, or I would be a person who used the built-in shortcuts that come inside a program, but just customizing your own shortcuts to how you enjoy editing just makes it so much better and you can edit so much faster. Now, what I like to do to set up this process is just go through an edit and literally list down the things that you do on a regular. It's not gonna sound like much, but if you do these things hundreds of times through an edit process, if you can simplify them down to a simple click, it's gonna make that process so much faster. For me, these are things like cut, delete, 
I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, so I need to lift clips from the timeline often, drop clips into the timeline, and zoom in and out of the timeline is something that I do very often. And on my keyboard, I have these shortcuts set up to the natural resting position of my left hand on the keyboard. Another thing about shortcuts is that you can set up a million of them, but if you don't use them, or if it requires your right hand to leave the mouse to come to the keyboard to actually do the shortcut, it's not really a shortcut because it's taking time from the editing process. So these things that I do very often, I can reach them from my natural resting position and I don't have to look down at the keyboard to do them. I move my pointer finger up to R, it'll zoom in on the timeline. I move my middle finger up to E, it'll zoom out of the timeline. Lifting and dropping clips into the timeline are also things that I can do at the natural resting position. And on my mouse, I talked about my customization that I have for cut and delete. Having all of these things that I do very often, not far away from where my hand is always gonna be at when I'm editing, makes it so I don't have to take my eyes off the screen. I can literally do everything that I need without stressing or moving around to an unnatural place. Right now, while I'm shooting this video on my screen, I have a list of bullet notes of things that I need to go through to get the information to y'all. I didn't used to do this. I literally used to just hop on camera and ramble and try to get my thought across. And then I would have to come into editing and I would have a 40 minute long clip that I would have to chop down to make sense for you guys to understand. If you're not planning ahead with your videos, you are already causing yourself so much headache and extended time in editing because you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're trying to achieve and you don't know what you're trying to say. And this isn't just for creating content. This is for creating client projects as well. If you can dial down everything that you need to get done, it's going to make the process of you editing so much faster. Now I talked a little bit about bullets that I have for this video, but if you watch any of my other recent videos, I will literally dial things down to the exact sentence of what I need to say. And then when it comes to editing, it makes the process of editing so much freaking fast because I can literally just go clip to clip. If I got this sentence right, I can go to the next sentence and the next sentence. And I'm not going through and hunting and trying to find things to make the story or what I'm trying to get across make sense. Another really big thing that I've noticed about planning ahead when it comes to creating projects is if I know exactly where I'm going and I know exactly what I'm trying to achieve, I don't overshoot, which means I don't have a ton of footage to go through in editing to sort and organize and pull out selects. It just makes everything so much faster. If you're not planning, you are causing yourself a headache in post. One thing that I used to always want to do when it came to editing is go through and review each clip front to back. <laughs> With a lot of projects that you're putting up online, creating content or for a client, you don't need to look back at the clip, especially if you just shot it a couple days ago. Looking at the audio waveform is literally a cheat code when it comes to cutting down dialogue because you can get an instant glimpse of what happened in the clip. Looking at an audio waveform, you can see exactly when dead spaces are in the clip, so you can cut those out and make the editing process from talking so much more seamless if you know what the next sentence is supposed to be, and you know that it's supposed to be long, if you look at the audio waveform and see that it's short, you can instantly see that it was a screw up and you can cut it out so quick. You don't have to look at the whole clip. The audio waveform has so much information in it. And if you can learn how to read it, you won't have to look at entire video clips. That wastes so much time. This one right here is something that I still struggle with. And I'm sure you can relate to it. Say like you just shot a project and you love the project. The process of editing is going so good and it's like every clip is just creating a masterpiece. And every time that you drop a new clip into the timeline, you wanna make sure that this project is gonna be the best project that you ever made. So when you drop a new clip in, you run it back to the beginning of the timeline and you watch the whole project from the beginning all the way up to the clip that you added because you wanna make sure everything is flowing. Going backwards on the timeline wastes so much time when it comes to editing. And this is just such a nasty habit that if you can get out of, it will speed the process up of editing so much more. Because if you think about it, that time adds up. If you're editing down a 10 minute project and you keep running it back from the beginning and watching six minutes before you drop in another clip, that's gonna stack up and stack up and stack up. In turn, this is what you can do to ensure that the whole project is going smooth. If you have a three clip sequence and all three of these clips flow into each other how they're supposed to, the whole project is fine. Because if these three clips work, then these three clips are going to work. And in turn, all of the clips are going to work. It's all going to flow. Going backwards on the timeline is a huge time waster, man. And this is something that when I don't do it, it makes editing so much faster. As a creative person, we all struggle with this because we want to experiment. And I used to experiment a ton, like literally every single YouTube video that I would put up, I would want to put a different color grade on it because 
I just like the process of color grading. I wanted to figure out, okay, can I do this better? Or can I find something else that I like more? But in reality, we have things that we enjoy and we need to lean into them. Repeating assets makes the process of editing so much faster. You're not looking for a new transition. You're not looking for a new color grade. You're not looking for a new animated title. You're not looking for anything new. What we don't really realize is that when we are experimenting with things, we already have things that we enjoy. These are things that we got to pay attention to. And once you dial these in and you enjoy them, it's nothing wrong with you continuing to use the things that you enjoy because at the end of the day, it's just building a look for you. It's building a style. So lean into the things that you enjoy. This is something that I used to avoid doing at all costs. <laughs> One reason is I felt like clients don't really know what they want but they actually do know what they want. And more times than not, me not going through this process has caused me so much pain because I had to go in and do a ton of different revisions. Communicating with the person that you're creating a video for will literally make the process of editing so much faster. I like to just hop on video calls with the client and just pitch the idea. Just throw it out there and see what they feel about it because it's gonna save you a lot of time and headache. And we're all familiar with this. We sit down, we work on a project, we make it perfect, we love it, and then we deliver it to a client and they just rip it apart. I don't like this. Can you edit this differently? Can you make this faster? Can you uh, switch the color of this? Can you go in and add this clip? If you already know that they don't like what it is that you're pitching, you could do all of this on the front end and it'll save you a freaking ton of time. Another thing that you can do when you're pitching your idea to your client or communicating with them is just show them any sort of references that you might have so you can get them to at least get a quick glimpse of what it is that you're going to make. If you can show them a sample of what you're going to make for them and they love it, then you're already ahead of the game when it comes to editing. This process is just going to reduce any sort of revisions that you have to make in editing and ultimately it's going to speed that process up. If you're interested at all in the MX line of accessories for editing, I highly recommend them. I vouch and I gloat and I boast and talk about these things so much on this channel. So it just makes sense for me to talk about them in this video of editing as well, because I was going to do it anyways. It's going to be links down in the description for all of these things. The MX Master 3S mouse, the MX Mechanical Keyboard, and for communicating with clients, you can check out the MX Brio webcam, which is awesome. It outputs a 4K image. It has a security cover for the cyber nerds out there. And it has a ton of different adjustments that you can do inside a camera for video calls, like adjusting your exposure, your white balance, your field of view. It also has really good microphones on the webcam as well. So it makes that process of communicating with the client for edit so much better. Links to all of those things will be down in the description below. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. But with that being said, I'm out y'all. Peace.